Well, that's a, a difficult uh, act to follow, and uh, I just want to uh, thank Ambassador Hill for his service to our country. Not only to Not only the Republic of Korea, but Iraq as ambassador, and of course as our assistant secretary. And in each of those jobs, he did a tremendous job for us. And uh, I just want to say, on the Republic of Korea and uh, possible unification at some point, we ought to be having discussions with the Chinese about how to treat the process by which you would get to unification, and then make it clear to China what kind of strategic situation we can accept. And, uh, it's been one of my dis disappointments in conversations over the year. So we haven't seemed to make too much progress on that issue, but I, I wish we would. I thought maybe what I could add is just briefly, next week the strategic, economic, uh, and, and uh, dialogue opens up. The strategic and economic dialogue opens up. And I thought I might, uh, I spent last week talking to various people about uh, three topics related to that, and I thought I'd just share a few of the uh, at least conclusions I arrived at as we look next week at uh, these talks and what they did or didn't uh, uh, produce. But I might just mention, first of all, what moment I see us in in U.S.-China relations, sort of the setting uh, for these talks. Secondly, just a few comments, and I don't know if Ambassador Hill will agree or not, but on the structure of this dialogue as opposed to the one in your administration. Uh, and then talk about what I think the core uh, desires of each side are to come out of these talks with. Bottom line, I don't think we're going to see any big headlines. I don't think we're going to see any big breakthroughs. In fact, I was at a meeting uh, with an administration person, and he was searching for a metaphor, and I had been at Ohio State. I said, it's going to be three yards and a cloud of dust. It's that kind of football game uh, we're in with the Chinese. And I suppose that is the bottom line of what I have to say. Um, I think in terms of the moment we're in, and we, of course we spent all day talking about uh, U.S.-China relations, but I think maybe we gain a little altitude here. I would say, first of all, I think both countries are very preoccupied with their domestic politics, uh, to mean domestic economies. Uh, if we would characterize that we're both in beginning in our election, cycles, uh, the Chinese in the 18th Party Congress, the United States in our, not only our congressional election cycle, but our general election cycle. And quite frankly, I think everything that we will be saying to one another is shaped by those under, underlying political dynamics in our, our two countries. I think China's very worried about its inflationary uh, potential. Uh, I think the succession is probably pretty much solved on the party side, but I'm not convinced it's solved on the premier side, the state part, uh, side. And, and there are certainly a lot of other positions on the Standing Committee of the Politburo and the Politburo that aren't resolved. And so there's a long way to go in terms of China's domestic uh, politics to get through the sort of next roster of leadership for the next uh, 10 years in, in China. So I think that's the first thing to say is we are both preoccupied with our domestic politics and what's going to be said by each side in Washington is going to be next week shaped uh, by that. I think secondly, and it was certainly a, a, not even a, an undercurrent, but a quite explicit current of what was said today, is um, I think there, despite the recent visit of Hu Jintao, um, there is an undercurrent of increasing strategic mutual suspicion between the United States and China, particularly in our security apparatus, but not limited to that. Public opinion in both societies is not very supportive of the kind of uh, constructive relationship I would like to see. Uh, and so I think we have this preoccupation domestically uh, with a, an overlay of mutual strategic uh, suspicion. I think a, a whole other uh, thing that I would say is that um, uh, my sense is that uh, the, the People's Liberation Army, and, and if I look at, our, at some of the currents in our security apparatus, they're not as interested in talking to each other as I think they should be. And uh, we, I think it's a sort of talking point Americans have 
that we need more military to military dialogue, but sometimes I'm not entirely convinced our military is all that much more excited about the talks uh, than, than the Chinese. Uh, certainly another overlay, and we just had last week the uh, human rights discussions in China. Frankly, uh, I don't think they could or did make much difference. Uh, it doesn't mean I don't think they should happen. I just think there's limited prospects for proposition. But I think that one of the concerns that Americans have is that the, what you might call the trajectory of political reform or its absence in China. And I don't think that's uh, been uh, too helpful uh, to the sort of setting for productive talks uh, next week. So the long and the short of it is, is I think we're not in the best of all possible moments in U.S.-China relations. We're not in the worst. Uh, of moments, but uh, I think uh, it limits my expectations. Now, in all fairness, I think on the economic side, we've made, we are making, and have made some progress at the same time we have some uh, uh, problems. Um, I'd say the first thing is, I think, and I, I'd be very interested in what our economist here uh, reacts, but it seems to me that if you ask who's making greater progress in rebalancing their economy at this moment, you arguably could argue China has set in motion some rebalancing uh, to a greater degree than uh, the United States. Um, just give you a, a couple of figures without glazing you over. Uh, China's trade sur global trade surplus as a percentage of, uh, of, uh, global, of, of its GDP uh, has fallen by about 50 percent uh, uh, in the last couple of years. So while it still has a very sizable global trade surplus, it has uh, de declined as a, a percentage of the total. Uh, also, if you look at the exchange rate, I think there will be mention of the exchange rate at these talks because it's obligatory that we do so, but I think we're going to be raising that issue with less feeling and less anxiety than perhaps in the, fact, in the past. China's exchange rate uh, between its, uh, its own moving the, uh, the rate up and inflation, is a, they've moved up about 10%, and if you projected a 10% uh, revaluation annually, uh, you know, before too long, you're into the zone of the, of the manageable and short progress is being made there. And so I think that's going to be less of a, uh, an issue. Uh, also, this whole issue of domestic, uh, which we talked about domestic innovation uh, and so forth, and uh, was mentioned on several occasions during the day, uh, I think China's leaders have actually made some uh, positive statements on the need to not be uh, forcing technology transfer. The real problem, as I would understand it, is provinces and localities and firms not in implementing an insufficient central attention uh, to this issue. But uh, there is at least some prospect that I think uh, that could be moving in the right direction, although much more slowly than we would uh, uh, like. 